today I'm going to show you how to make this delicious cheesy baked macaroni and cheese. So let's get started with the video. We're going to begin by shredding our cheeses. You're going to want to shred smoked gouda. Fontina. Harvati. Mild cheddar cheese and sharp cheddar cheese. When you finish shredding your cheeses, set them to the side. Next, fill a large pot with chicken broth. Bring it to a boil and then add your macaroni noodles. Cook your macaroni noodles for however long it says to on the box. While the noodles are boiling, we're going to make the cheese sauce. In a large saucepan over medium heat, add 2 tablespoons of butter. Once the butter is melted, gradually add 2 tablespoons of flour while whisking the butter and flour together. Once everything is mixed together, cook your roux for about 1-2 to two minutes. Then, while whisking, gradually add two and a half cups of half and half. Once you've added the half and half, continue to cook the sauce while whisking occasionally until it starts to become thick. Once the sauce starts to become thick, mix in two tablespoons of sour cream, and two ounces of cream cheese. Next, lower the heat and add one cup of mild cheddar cheese, One cup of sharp cheddar cheese, a half a cup of gouda, a half a cup of fontina cheese, and a half a cup of Harvati. Once you've mixed in all of your cheeses, add one teaspoon of salt, a half a teaspoon of pepper, one fourth teaspoon of onion powder, one fourth teaspoon of garlic powder, one fourth teaspoon of Creole seasoning, one fourth teaspoon of paprika, a dash of cayenne pepper, and a dash of white pepper. Mix your seasonings in until well combined and then you are all finished making your cheese sauce. By now your noodles should be finished cooking. Add the cheese sauce to your macaroni noodles and mix everything together. Then mix in a handful of each of your shredded cheeses. Then grease a large baking dish with butter, oil, or nonstick spray. After greasing the baking dish, add the macaroni and cheese into the pan.
Evenly spread it throughout the pan and then add your leftover shredded cheese on top. When you're finished adding the cheese, sprinkle some paprika on top as well. Then cover the baking dish in tin foil and place it in the oven at 350 degrees for 30 minutes. After 30 minutes, remove the tin foil and then cook your mac and cheese under the broiler for about 3 to 5 minutes or until the top has browned. Then take your mac and cheese out of the oven and let it rest for about 10 to 15 minutes. And that's it, you are all finished! Now you can enjoy your macaroni and cheese. The mac and cheese is cheesy, creamy, and super delicious. This is my go-to macaroni and cheese recipe. I've improved the recipe little by little over the years and this is the updated version. Oh, and this is the recipe I used for my Thanksgiving vlog as well. Alright, that's it for this video. Thank you guys so much for watching. Everything I used in this video will be down in the description below. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Bye! Hey everyone, today I'll be teaching you how to make collard greens with brown butter cornbread. This recipe is absolutely delicious and easy to make, so let's get started with the video. Begin by cleaning 1.5 pounds of collard greens. I'm using shredded collard greens from a bag, but you can always just get your own collard greens and chop them up however you like. Once you're finished cleaning your collard greens, set them to the side. Next, cut the meat off of a smoked turkey leg. When you finish cutting the meat off your turkey leg, set your meat to the side. Now, in a large pot over medium heat, add 1 tablespoon of olive oil and a half a cup of diced onions. Saute your onions for about 2 minutes. Then add 1 tablespoon of minced garlic and then let that cook for about one minute. Once your onions and garlic have cooked, add two cups of chicken broth. Then add your smoked turkey. Let your turkey cook in the chicken broth for about 20 to 30 minutes. Once that time is up, you can go ahead and add your collard greens. After adding your collard greens, let it cook down for about 5 minutes. After you've done that, Add a half a teaspoon of onion powder and a half a teaspoon of garlic powder. Next, let your collard greens simmer over medium-low heat for about 30 minutes with the lid on. Once the 30 minutes are up, add 2 teaspoons of apple cider vinegar. half a teaspoon of red pepper flakes and a half a teaspoon of pepper. Then mix everything together until well combined. 
Also, by this point, you can take out the pieces of smoked turkey and shred them up a bit more and place them back into the pot. By the way, I didn't add any salt because there was enough salt coming from the turkey leg and my broth, but if your collard greens need salt, go ahead and add some. Then let it simmer for about 10 to 15 more minutes. And that's it! You have made collard greens. You can go ahead and lower the heat once your collard greens have finished cooking. Give it a taste and add any other seasonings that you think it might need. Now that we've finished making the collard greens, let's move on to making the brown butter cornbread. In an iron skillet, melt one stick of butter. Once your stick of butter has melted, continue to cook the melted butter until it turns brown and has a nutty aroma. Next, pour your brown butter through a strainer. Then set your brown butter aside and let it cool to room temperature. Next, in a large bowl, sift one cup of cornmeal, one cup of flour, six tablespoons of sugar, two teaspoons of baking powder, a half a teaspoon of baking soda, and a half a teaspoon of salt. Using a spatula, create a well in the middle of your dry ingredients. In another bowl, add two eggs and your brown butter. Whisk your brown butter and your eggs together until well combined. And then add one and a half cups of buttermilk. Whisk everything together until well combined. Then add your wet ingredients into your dry ingredients. Whisk everything together until just combined. Now add your cornbread batter into your iron skillet. It should still have some melted butter on the inside, but you can always add more melted butter on the inside or on the sides of your iron skillet if you feel like it needs more before adding your cornbread batter. Smooth the top of your batter and then place your cornbread into the oven at 400 degrees and let it bake for 23 minutes. And this is what it should look like when you're finished. Allow your cornbread to cool for about 10 to 15 minutes before serving. And this is the finished result. Everything came out wonderfully. The cornbread and the collard greens both tasted great. Okay, so I wanted to mention a few things. With the smoked turkey, you can add the bone in your pot if you like. I know some people like to add the bone. Um, I just didn't add it because it didn't fit inside the pot, so I just added the meat. I use shredded collard greens because my mom told me that's how my grandma made her collard greens, so I just wanted to do the same thing. Alright, that's it for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed. Thank you so much for watching the video. Everything I used in this video will be down in the description below. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Hey everyone, today I'll be teaching you how to make these delicious and easy candy yams. So let's get started with the video. Begin by cleaning four sweet potatoes.
Then fill a large pot with water. Add your sweet potatoes into the pot. Add just enough water to cover your potatoes. Now place the pot on the stove and bring your pot to a boil. Boil your sweet potatoes for about 15 to 20 minutes. You want to be able to pierce your fork into the sweet potatoes, but you still want them to be slightly underdone. So basically you'll be able to pierce it with your fork, but not all the way through your potato. That way you can cut your sweet potatoes, but they'll still keep their shape. Once your sweet potatoes have finished cooking, peel off the skin. If you make a cut on the skin and then peel it off, it should be easy to take the rest of the skin off. Once you've peeled the skin off of all of your sweet potatoes, start cutting the sweet potatoes into slices. By the way, after you boil your sweet potatoes, they are way easier to cut. When you're finished, set your sweet potatoes to the side. In a baking dish, add a layer of butter. Then add a layer of your sliced sweet potatoes. After that, add another layer of butter. Then add one to two tablespoons of white sugar. And one to two tablespoons of brown sugar. Then sprinkle some cinnamon over everything until it is covered. And finally sprinkle some ground nutmeg and ground cloves. Repeat this process until you run out of sweet potatoes. I don't really measure when it comes to making yams. I believe I used one stick of butter for the yams and, and honestly for the sugar it really depends on how sweet you want your yams. So I just kept adding one to two tablespoons of white sugar and brown sugar for each layer. For the cinnamon, you can add as much as you want. Um, I usually just sprinkle enough to cover everything. And for the nutmeg and cloves, I do recommend going easy on those since they do have a really strong flavor. So just um, a tiny sprinkle. Cover your baking dish in tin foil and then place your yams in the oven at 350 degrees. Then bake your yams for 30 minutes. Once the 30 minutes are up, baste your candy yams until they are completely covered and then place them back into the oven for another 20 to 30 minutes or until your candy yams are as tender as you want them to be. You'll know your candy yams are ready when you can pierce a fork through them. And this is the finished result. These candy yams are super easy and super simple to make. They are absolutely delicious. I've been making my candy yams like this since I was a kid. I know everyone has their different way of doing it, but this way was easier for me and it's still easy, so I use it to this day. 
The candy yams are sweet and soft and delicious and they're a great side. I hope the video was helpful and that you all enjoyed. Thank you guys so much for watching. Everything I used in this video will be down in the description below. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Bye! Hey everyone, today I'll be teaching you how to make this delicious moist cornbread from scratch. The recipe I'm using is from Darius Cooks. He has a lot of great recipes and we use this cornbread recipe every year for Thanksgiving. I'll have his recipe and his YouTube channel linked in the description below. This cornbread is sweet, moist, and delicious, so let's get started with the video. In a large bowl, add 1 cup of flour, 1 cup of cornmeal, 1 cup of sugar, However, if you don't want it too sweet, add a half a cup of sugar or 3 fourths cup of sugar. Now add 1 teaspoon of salt and 2 tablespoons of baking powder. Honestly, sifting is totally optional. I just like to sift all my dry ingredients. Now create a well in the middle of your dry ingredients. Then add two eggs, one stick of melted butter, and one and one fourth cup of buttermilk. Now mix everything together until well combined. Next, fold in one cup of frozen corn kernels. You can also fold in three fourths cup of chopped pecans. The reason I didn't add pecans into the cornbread is because my brother doesn't like pecans, so we never added it, and now it's just become a habit to not put pecans in the cornbread when I'm using this recipe. Set your cornbread batter to the side and place an iron skillet in the oven at 350 degrees or at broil, just until it becomes hot. Take your iron skillet out and then add some butter. Your butter is going to melt in the hot iron skillet, so use that to coat your pan in the melted butter. This technique is also optional. I just saw a chef use it once and I thought it was really neat. I think I added too much butter though. Now add your cornbread batter into your iron skillet. Make sure the top is smooth and even. Now place your cornbread in the oven at 375 degrees for 35 minutes. While the cornbread is cooking, we're going to make our honey butter. Add one stick of softened butter in a bowl. Then add 2 tablespoons of honey, 1 pinch of salt. Then mix everything until well combined. When you're finished, set it to the side. When your cornbread has finished cooking and it's still nice and hot, add your honey butter on top. And this is the finished result. This is a really good cornbread. I totally recommend giving it a try. The recipe I used is from one of his cookbooks, which I recommend you get because he has a lot of good recipes. Um, but the recipe that I'll link down below is from his website, which is slightly different. 
Like I said before, this cornbread is moist, sweet, and delicious. I really like adding the corn because it just makes it 10 times better. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Thank you so much for watching. Everything I used in this video will be down in the description below. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Bye! Hey everyone, today I'm going to show you how to make deviled eggs. Let's get started with the video. In a pot filled with water, add 8 eggs. Bring the water to a boil and then boil the eggs for about 10 to 15 minutes. Once the eggs have finished cooking, drain the water. Then fill the same pot with cool water. Next, place a paper towel on a wooden cutting board. Then peel the eggs. By the way, the reason I didn't place the eggs in an ice bath right after boiling them is because I find them easier to peel when they're still hot. Which is why I just add cool water to the same pot I boiled them in. This makes the eggs cool enough to touch, but still hot. By the way, I like to place the paper towel on the cutting board because it helps dry off the eggs and it makes cleanup easier after peeling them. Next, cut all the eggs in half. When you're finished, remove the egg yolks from the boiled eggs and place them in a bowl. Next, mash the egg yolks with a fork or a potato masher. When you're done, add a quarter cup of mayonnaise and one tablespoon of mustard. Then add two to three tablespoons of sweet relish. and a half a tablespoon of sugar. After mixing everything together, taste your mixture and see if it needs any more mayo, mustard, relish sugar, or any additional ingredients that you would like to add. Once you're happy with how it tastes, you can fill the egg whites with the egg yolk mixture by using a spoon or a piping bag. I usually spoon it on, but this time I'm using a piping bag for presentation. Once all the eggs have been filled, sprinkle some paprika on top. This is optional, but you can also add some freshly chopped chives as well. And that's it, you're all done, and this is the finished result. These deviled eggs are delicious and super easy to make. I use this recipe every time I make deviled eggs and it's always a crowd pleaser. By the way, everyone makes their deviled eggs differently, this is just the way I make mine. Alright, that's it for this video, thank you guys so much for watching. Everything I used in this video will be down in the description below. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Bye! Hey everyone, today I'll be teaching you how to make some corn pudding. This recipe is really easy and it tastes great, so let's get started with the video. In a large bowl, add one box of Jiffy Corn Mix. 2 cups of mild cheddar cheese, a half a cup of sugar, 1 can of kernel corn, 2 cans of cream style corn,
one cup of sour cream, a half a stick of melted butter, and one can of evaporated milk. Then mix all your ingredients together until well combined. When you're finished, set your mixture to the side. In a pan, add some olive oil or nonstick spray. Then thoroughly coat your pan. When you're finished, add your corn pudding mixture into the pan. After that, place it into the oven to bake at 400 degrees for 45 minutes. Once it's finished baking, let it cool for 10 to 15 minutes and then enjoy. Corn pudding is my second favorite side next to mac and cheese. It is delicious and a must have when I make holiday dinner. Whether it's for Thanksgiving or Christmas or even New Year's, I always make this. My granny made this all the time and me and my brothers loved it. After a while, we asked for the recipe and we started making it ourselves. I totally recommend you try it. It's absolutely delicious, I swear. Alright, that's it for this video. Thank you guys so much for watching. Everything I used in this video will be down in the description below. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Bye!